Christmas this year is not going to be the same. How many times have you heard that over the last months? But it's true. For one thing, we're, we're not having our normal Christmas assembly. We're having to do it all online. This year with coronavirus, those old traditions that we are so used to and that we've been so looking forward to just aren't going to happen, at least not in the same way. This time of year that should be so jolly for many folks is not jolly at all. And it's not just Christmas that we're missing out on. So much in our lives is disrupted and up in the air from not knowing about exams to wondering if older folks in your life will make it through the winter. It's an anxious time in which we live. Not wanting to pour cold water on any festive spirits, it's important that we own up to how difficult the situ situation we are facing is and how we're feeling about it. The way the story the first Christmas is often told, you can be forgiven for thinking that it was a lovely time in a lovely place, a starry, cloudless night, a baby born with no pain, laid in pristine hay, a baby who doesn't cry, as one Christmas carol would have us believe. But the world of first century Palestine was far from idyllic. Palestine was occupied by a brutal military regime. Why, the reason Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem was because the military dictator wanted to squeeze every penny of tax he could from the poor of the region. On that first Christmas, there was so much that was broken, so much that was spoiled, so much that was torn apart. And Mary's song, that song that she sings as she anticipates her baby's coming, in part reflects the dark situation that the world was in on that first Christmas. In her song, she points to tyrants on thrones. She speaks of the inequity between the rich and the poor of the crippling humility that many poor people faced while the few proud rich lived in lavish luxury. But Mary's song is not a song of despair. Mary's song is nothing short of a revolutionary song of hope. You see, Mary believed that the child in her womb, soon to be born baby in the manger, was the one who would come to put things right for her, for her nation, and for the world. He was the one whom God had promised to send to repair what was broken, redeem what was spoiled, and mend what was torn. But this was, this was a strange way to bring about a revolution, a baby born to a poor family in a forgotten backwater of the Roman Empire. Funerals recently have been a challenge. You know we are not allowed to have more than 20 people physically present. Everyone has to wear a mask and everyone has to keep two meters apart from each other. As Christmas approaches, it's even more difficult for families knowing that their loved ones won't be there on that special family day. But even in the midst of such tragedy, there is hope. The radical, revolutionary kind of hope which Mary sang about in her song. And I think there's a germ of that radical hope in the story of a, a woman whose funeral I conducted not too long ago. Minnie was in her 80s when she died. For much of her life, she had worked in the weaving mills in the borders and then here in Bigger. Minnie became very skilled at her work, so much so that when she retired, her former employer kept coming round to ask Minnie to return to work. You see, Minnie was what they call an invisible darner. Cloth would 
come off the industrial looms with many of the threads broken. Sometimes the, the cloth was in such a state of disrepair that it was unsellable. But someone like Minnie could repair it. She could reweave each broken strand, make it like new. She could repair it so that no one could ever look at it and make out that it had ever, it had ever been in tatters. That's what God was doing that first Christmas. He came, born in obscurity, in a forgotten backwater of the Roman Empire, born to poor, seemingly insignificant people. Even his adult life didn't seem to add up to much. It ended when he was only 33 in a brutal, painful death. But by coming to this broken world as he did, living alongside broken and hurting people, dying the death he died and rising again three days later, he was able to reweave the tatters of our world back into the pattern they were always meant to have. God is like many, an invisible darner. He doesn't come crashing in as we may think he should, throwing out what was spoiled and broken. No, God lovingly takes the broken bits of our lives and of our, our world, and if we allow him, he repairs them. Nothing is too broken, nothing too messed up, nothing too torn. As the psalmist says, he who was, has determined the number of stars in the heavens cares for you. He will gather what is scattered, heal what is wounded, and mend what is broken. May God do that for you and for our world, even in this year of a COVID Christmas.